Hi, and welcome to this video about single instance application. By that, I mean an executable that can only be launched with a single process. If you try to launch the same executable again, you won't be able to do that. It won't work. The single instance is just that single process. Let's see an example of that. Let me launch Media Player. That's the classic Media Player Windows has. If I go ahead and try to launch another Media Player, here's me trying to launch another Media Player, you can see that it doesn't seem to work. So what is happening here behind the scenes? So in fact, the second instance does launch, but somehow knows that there's one other instance already running, so it simply shuts down. Let's see what that looks like and how it works. So here's Process Explorer. Let's find Media Player. Here it is. And you'll notice there are a bunch of handles in its process, which of course we expect, but then there's a particular object here of type mutex that has a very specific name, and that's this particular name. Check for other instance mutex. Seems to be like a hint as to what's the purpose of this mutex. So the basic idea is that since this mutex is named, the second instance tries to create or open a handle to the same mutex with the same name. If that object exists, then it will shut down instead of launching properly. So we can trick Media Player by right-clicking here and closing the handle behind the process back. Once I do that, you notice the handle becomes red and it goes away, meaning it's just being closed. So once I did that, let me go ahead and try to launch Media Player again. So here's my Run dialog box again. Let me try and we get another Media Player. So now we have two Media Players here uh, running around. And of course we can repeat this procedure and create yet another media player, as many as we like, really. You might be wondering how can I close a handle in a different process as Process Explorer does. I'll show how to do that in another video. But for now, let's see if we can implement that in code. Let me create a new project here. Let's call that something simple like uh, single. So let's go with a simple console C++ application, of course, could be any kind of application, really. Let's just call that single. Put it under temp here. So here's what I can do. What I can do is essentially what Media Player does. So first, let me remove all the boilerplate stuff here. And let's add and include for Windows .h to get the Windows headers, and then also let's add stdio here to print some stuff if we need to. So the basic idea is to try to create a kernel object with a name. It doesn't really have to be a mutex, can be anything, but uh, let's create a mutex just for, I don't know, for consistency, but could be really anything. And the point is to create an object that has a particular name. And if that object exists, then we know we're not the first one. And so I'm going to give it a name, could be anything, but we try to make it unique. Otherwise, if it clashes with an existing object, that probably won't be a good thing. Let's call that single instance demo here. And so if that doesn't work for some reason, then we're definitely in some bad shape or creating new tags or opening new tags and we can display whatever GetLastero has to say. This could fail if, for example, there's another object that has the same name, single instance demo, that doesn't happen to be a mutex, but something completely different, like a semaphore. So that definitely won't work, but just we'll just make sure that we don't get into that kind of trouble. Otherwise, we have a proper handle. And the thing to understand here is that create mutex actually works as a create or open mutex if you give it a name. So if the object doesn't exist, it creates one and you get a handle to that object. If the object exists, you get another handle to the same object. A new object is not being created. How can you tell? This is where the get last error function has another usage, not just to provide errors, but also to provide some more details in this particular case. If we have error already exists, then we know this object already exists and we can say second instance exiting 
and we'll just exit the application. Otherwise, we're the first instance. Let's print that out. Let's say first instance. And do something like press enter to exit. And we'll just wait for some simple enter by using the get s function. We don't care about the actual contents there. And we're done. Essentially, we can close the handle even though it doesn't uh, it's, it's not really necessary because we're about to, to exit the process anyway, but let's just do that for good measure, and we're done. So let's try it out. So first, let me go ahead and open a command window here. Here's command window. Let's go to x64 debug here, and we have our single instance. So first, we can go ahead and try to launch one of these instances using this command window, that's definitely one way of going about it. Once I do that, you can see it's a first instance, so press enter to exit. Let's now open another command window. We can also launch from Visual Studio, but let's just use another command window for consistency. So here's another command window here. Let's go to x64 debug, and if I try to launch single, here's what we get. That's the second instance exiting, and the process exits. And you'll notice in Process Explorer, if we go to the single process here, so here goes, we should be able to find a mutex with that name, single instance demo. That's it, that's the one. There's a single handle to that, which is what we expect. You might be wondering what is that prefix here, sessions one base named objects. I'll discuss that in a different video, but we actually provide only the last piece of the name. So when we create another instance, then what happens is that the process does launch, but we probably won't be able to actually notice it because it's very fast. So we won't notice the new single instance showing up in Process Explorer because it's very quick. But of course we can add a delay just to show that indeed this is what is happening here. Anyway, you can go back to the first instance, press enter, and now the process is gone and the mutex is also freed because there are no more handles to it. And now we can go ahead and launch from this command window, and now this one is running and will be identified as a new instance, which will show the same, uh, the same one. And again, we can play the same trick as we did on media player. So if I go ahead and go to that single instance demo and close the handle behind the process back, and go back here and try to launch another instance, it works. And now we have two processes claiming to be a single instance, which in fact they are not. We have two of them right now running at the same time. And that's because we have tricked the process by closing the handle behind its back. And obviously it's something you shouldn't really be doing, uh, but this is a risk when you have named objects, because some other entities might meddle with your objects. 